Hey folks, this is Stratman Mark. Uh, I am recording this video in my car because I'm at the lake right now, waiting on something. I got some time, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this video uh, real quick. Um, so, uh, long story short, uh, I was playing guitar a lot uh, years ago, playing on the street, uh, playing up to five hours a day, making a lot of money as a busker in Seattle, Washington. Um, and I played so much that I, either I played so much that I developed carpal tunnel syndrome from overplaying and under uh, resting, or I uh, got carpal tunnel syndrome uh, not from the playing itself, uh, you know, some other way. At any rate, it got so bad where I could not play. My arm, well, my, my fingers, and especially my thumb, would go anywhere from uh, anywhere from moderately to uh, severely numb and my whole hand all my fingers would go numb but the thumb would be the most and then the others would be a little bit numb uh, and my, my, it would get to where my whole arm was numb and uh, it was so bad that I actually sold all my gear even some really beloved gear I didn't sell my beloved uh, Stratocaster because fortunately the, the frets were worn out and I, and I couldn't sell it uh, really and besides I, I, I didn't want to sell it so I kept that but I sold all my other gear including my uh, Fender 68 uh, drip edge silver face uh, twin reverb with an original cover and the original owner's manual so I got sold all of that okay and so all of a sudden I didn't have guitar in my life anymore and after about a week of that I couldn't stand it I could not stand it so I uh, and my arm was, was really numb when I was thinking about this. I couldn't stand it. So I thought, well, let's see if there's anything I can do for myself to solve this problem or at least make it better. Maybe there's some stretching that I can do. So the first thing that I discovered is that uh, right here, between here and here, uh, there's a problem. It seems to me that... Well, I'm going to show you. Now, between here and here, there's a problem. What it is, is I'm going to show you. I'm going to see if the mic is going to pick up the sound of this popping. When I apply pressure to this and this, I'm going to apply downward pressure like this. And I th you might hear it pop on the mic. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to try it here right now. Here we go. Okay, it's not... Okay, it didn't pop right now. Okay, it didn't pop right now, but normally when I put one finger here, because there's a bone under here. Normally when I put one finger on this bone and my thumb on the upper bone and, and put, apply downward pressure and also spread spread this out, then I get some really sometimes loud popping. Uh, and after I do that a few times, the popping uh, gets a little bit better. But then, so this is a step-by-step -step, uh, video basically about some stretching exercises that I was able to come up with on my own through trial and error. That, that have saved my playing. Okay, so the first one is, in my case, again, when I applied pre downward pressure here and here to spread this out, that would, that, would un, that would basically undo the numbing. Okay, so there's something in here that's binding and pinching a nerve, I guess. This is all guess, guesswork. And when I would spread this apart like this, it would un, un, what, un, uh, uncrimp everything in here. I mean, the, apparently things are are too tight in here. So when I would spread it apart, it would clear and free up the uh, whatever's rubbing and, and uh, you know. So, uh, okay, so that was the first thing. Okay, so that really helped. And then I thought, okay, well, what else can I do? So I started up, uh, I came up with a massage situation. So the first thing I'll do again is I'll, I'll keep pushing this and I'll move my wrist up back and forth like this, up and down if you're looking at it like this. But I'll, I'll apply pressure downward and also spreading apart. To spread this apart while I'm moving my wrist. And I'll keep doing that carefully until there's no more popping. Okay, I'm basically taking my palm and spreading it out like this. I'm taking my palm and spreading it out like that. Hope you can see that on camera. So instead of being sort of cupped, which is kind of the natural position, I'm spreading it like that using my fingers until it stops popping. Okay, so that's the first step because that's the first bit of improvement that I get. The next thing I do is a bunch of stretching. So the first thing I'll do is just stretch my arm out as far as uh, hard as I can. I'll turn my wrist like this, and I'll spread my fingers, and I'll flatten my hand. Flatten my hand because when I flat, when my hand is flatter, uh, the, uh, the the binding that's going on in my wrist apparently and the numbness goes away. So I stretch while flattening my hand, 
flattened, flattened. I'll stretch and, and, and pivot my uh, <clears throat> arm while, while flattening my hand and outstretching my fingers. I'll do that quite a bit. Okay, that's that one. Another one is that I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tilt my wrist back like this and then push forward to stretch like this, like that. Just a little bit, kind of like this, kind of like this, see that? Not too much, like that, just a little. And you can feel it in my fingers, all the way through my fingers and my thumbs to the tips of my fingers and my thumbs. It's, something's happening here, we're getting some stretching going on, okay? Okay, so I do that. Now, uh, the worst thing usually is, is my thumb with numbness and stuff. Um, so the next thing that I do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and stretch out my thumb like this. See if you can see this. I'm just gonna pull on it. Sometimes it'll pop. I'm just gonna pull on it like this. Pulling towards the right, pulling like this. Okay, there we go, it popped. Okay, now it's, and I'm stretching it. See, I'm just kind of stretching it like this. Like this, okay? Same thing on the next one. Pull it, and at first you gotta be careful, especially at first, because things are tight, okay? I felt it loosen a little bit right there, at, you know. And so now we're, we're just stretching it, pulling it outward. Stretching it like that, okay? Middle finger, same deal. See, there's a, little, there's a tiny pop on each of these fingers as I do this. So pull on the middle finger. See, each one, as I pull on it, I don't think the camera's gonna hear it, but it's the slightest bit of a popping sound, which means I'm, I'm uncrimping uh, the, the finger. And then the pinky finger's last, pull that out. Okay, that one popped too. Okay, the next thing that I do is particularly since the thumb is where I've got the worst numbness is I'll start stretching out the thumb and uh, you can see right here I think right up in here there's tendons and or ligaments and or whatever in here uh, right here you can feel it's if you take your own hand and stretch out like this you can feel something really tight right up like this really tight in there again a tendon or a ligament or something well that is the numbest part of my whole hand is this area right here so my theory has been that if I stretch this tendon, it may be too tight. If I stretch this tendon, it, may, it would make it a little bit longer, theoretically, a little bit more relaxed, and helps the situation. So what I do is I'll start off by, uh, by uh, going downward with my thumb. So when I play guitar, it's kind of, it's, uh, see when I play guitar, my thumb is, is kind of stretched out that way, this way. So I'm gonna go the opposite direction so I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm going to uh, go like this. Let's see, can you see that? No, you can't. I'm gonna, here we go, I'm gonna push like this. I'm uh, let's see. Can you see that, what I'm doing? I'm stretching it. There we go. I'm stretching my thumb in the opposite way that it normally is, right? So the normal way is when your thumb is outward, right, and it, it's been injured from playing that way so theoretically if you pull the uh, the tendon or whatever the opposite direction it should be helpful and, and I'm finding that it is helpful all right uh, and you know for me okay so that's the first thing that I do and then I'll pull it outward then I'll pull it outward as well like this right out like this all right just that simple just that simple folks and some I'll hold it like this I'll hold it and I'll pull it out as far as I can. You get the idea, I'm really stretching my thumb every which way but loose. I'm stretching my thumb every way I can possibly think of. See, I'm doing this. Okay, now here's another one, twirling my thumb around like that. I'm wanting to stretch every everything that's involved with my thumb, I want to stretch all that out. So I'm going that way, then I'll switch directions like this. And as I do these things, I get a little numbness because it's stimulating everything and loosening things up in my opinion, okay, so I'll do that. Okay, then the next thing is I'll go ahead and pull on all these fingers to stretch them, same as the other ones, so pull down like that. Oh, there, there was a pop, that one didn't pop, that one didn't pop, and the pinky downward, okay, next thing I'll do is I'll stretch these. I'll start off, I'll go like this, and I'll start off the first time carefully and gently, right? Carefully and gently, here's my index finger, middle finger, See, at first you'll feel it's really stiff, and after about the second or third time, it's starting to get loosen up. You can just, I mean, you can just tell. It's definitely loosening up from each of these little steps that I'm doing. See, initially these haven't been stressed yet, these fingers, and at first it's quite stiff, but after I've been doing it for a second, it starts loosening up. Okay, and there's the pinky on my left hand, my fretting hand. Okay, um, okay, so then, then we're gonna do another stretching deal, but it's gonna involve all the, uh, the thumb and the fingers all at the same time. So I'm gonna go like this. 
See, I'm going to take my hand like this, and my other hand like this, and I'm going to do this. I'm stretching everything out really good. See? And I'll hold it for a second. And I'll move the thumb around a little bit like that. Like that. Okay? Alright. Now, the next one that I do is I'm wanting to stretch what's between the, the, the pain and the numbing and the problem is, is centers around this area here for me. Right? So what I'm wanting to do is take and stretch this part of my arm and wrist away from my hand to loosen things up in the wrist area where the problem is. So I'm going to go ahead and while, I, while I'm stretching, I'm also going to be pulling down on the muscles, the ligaments and or tendons or whatever's in here. Maybe you can see my skin stretching, but I'm going to pull it like this and move my wrist back and forth. And again, it popped just now. And when I first start, it's quite tight. But then with every little movement I make, it, it loosens up a bit, quite a bit. Okay, so I'll do that that direction, which would be this direction, up and down. Okay, up and down while pulling on all this. You can really, really, really feel stuff stretching, but there's no pain. If you get any pain at all of any kind, you got to stop because something's wrong. Okay, and then I'm going to go, so I'm doing it up and down like this. Now we're going to do a side to side like this while putting tension on everything here. See, side to side. And again, you can really, let's see, there we go. You can really feel the stretching that's going on here, folks. You can really feel it. And then I'll shake it out a little bit. Stretch. This is another one. I'll kind of stretch like this. And I'll do the thumb some more. And you can see, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm going every direction I can possibly think of. Every kind of movement I can think of. See, I'm really stretching out my hand and my fingers so everything's tight. And then it's loosening as I do this. Yep, like that. I'm going to pull and do this again. Because things are really tight in there when I begin this process. And all the way along, they get looser and looser and looser as I continue. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, okay, now here's the next step. I'm massaging some different areas here. So since my thumb is the worst, uh, I start working around the thumb. So the first thing that I'm going to do is turn my hand like this. I'm going I'm to massage everything in here using my palm. See, again, my wrist area is where the problem is. So I'm going to lay my palm right on top of the problem area and I'm going to massage the side of the problem area. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going in a uh, rotating motion as you can see and I'm stretching not only the skin but the muscles and tendons and whatever that are, that are beneath the skin. I'm doing this very firmly so I'm stretching those good. First it's stretching one way. As I go around and around it's stretching this way then that way then this way then that way. It's stretching in all four directions and I'll switch up my, my uh, so I'm going clockwise now. Okay, clockwise. And again, I'm, I'm applying quite a bit of pressure and stretching things a lot. Counterclockwise. Okay, now we're going to move over to... Uh, to uh, the, we'll go to the thumb itself right here. Okay, so we're going to massage this here. We want to cover everything right here on top of the thumb, back here. And in between the thumb and index finger, we're massaging that. We're, we're massaging here all the way down. This, this joint here. Okay. And here, if you got the carpal problem, all this stuff's going to get numbed out. So we're, we're massaging everything that's numb to get the circulation improved and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to do on these, let's see, what are we doing next? Our next move is, oh yeah, so the next one is, so we massaged uh, right here, boom, boom, boom. Now we're going to massage right in here, pretty much uh, everything you see here. These three places, that, that, and that. Same thing with the flat of the palm, so we're going to do that. See? See, it's a, okay, clockwise, counterclockwise, sometimes you do it fast, getting slower, I'm also going to do up and down, see, up and down, just stretching stuff, okay, I've done that, we've done the top, or we've done the right hand side, if you will, we've done the right hand side, we've done uh, this part, the underside, now we're going to turn it like this and do the same thing up in here, especially right in this area here. So same thing, uh, circular stretching, up and down, side to side, up and down, side to side. And, and, you, can, and you, can, you can feel it, you can really, really feel it, and you can oftentimes hear it too. Okay, so that's that, 
and while extending my arm as, as hard as I can to stretch it, I'm also turning it. All right, all right. And then the final thing I'm going to do is a kind of a, a kung fu thing I learned when I took kung fu as a, as a kid, and that's a an exercise where you kind of go like this. You point your finger like this, and you have your uh, wrist tilted back a little bit, and you just push forward like this, like this. If you just push your arm forward with your hand in this position, it'll stretch things up. You don't want to overdo it, just a little bit. Now, the final, uh, one of the final things I have to say is, uh, for years I was playing a lot of uh, bar chords, where my index finger was running all the way across the neck, and the worst thing about it was when I was playing a bar chord, my wrist would be, see how severely my wrist is bent right here? This, this, that's a severe angle. That is a severe angle, okay? Severe angle, and I know it's a severe angle from looking at it, but more importantly, I know because it's painful uh, if I do that too much. And I realized that was part of the problem. So I've eliminated the playing the bar chords all the way across the neck that put my wrist at this angle. Once in a while, I'll do it. Instead, I play with my wrist like this. See, just, just now, when I had it like this, I could feel a little bit of pain and numbing, just a little bit. As soon as I went straight with it, it's gone. So that's another thing I did. I gave up playing uh, bar chords that stretch all the way across the neck. Anything that gives my, my wrist this kind of an, an angle, I had to stop doing it. And that was, uh, that's was that been a big part of my success with this. Um, that's it, folks. That's it. And it has solved my problem. Uh, oh, here's another thing. Super important. Uh, in my case, well, anyway, yeah, in my case, the problem's on my fretting hand. Not surprisingly, uh, and when I sleep at night, oftentimes I sleep on my side, and for whatever reason, my preferred way of sleeping, just sort of instinctively, is to sleep on my left side, which is my fretting hand side, which is the side of the hand that's got the carpal. So I've found that sleeping on the side of the uh, arm where the carpal is tends to maybe it, it tends to pinch off my shoulder somehow, so that I'm making things worse. So anytime I sleep on on my left shoulder, which is where the carpal wrist is, well then it's, it makes the, uh, the situation much worse for the carpal. It starts getting numb and, and buzzing and stuff like that, pins and needles. So now I never sleep on my left side. I never sleep on the arm and shoulder that has the carpal. I don't do that at all. I just sleep on the other arm and shoulder that makes for minimum stress to the already stressed out uh, carpal situation. So I didn't have to go get surgery, you know, I didn't find a miracle cure where it's completely disappeared. But what I've done is found a way to really, really manage it. I'd say I'm about at 90% to 95% of normal. Um, when I play, I don't play as long as I used to. Uh, I don't play quite as frequently as I used to, but pretty much almost as much as I used to. Um, I stretch out before I play. I stretch my hand, my wrist. I stretch out uh, while I'm playing, take some breaks, and I stretch out after I'm playing. And I even keep stretching uh, on a regular basis for about the next uh, 8 to 10 to 12 hours. Periodically, I'll just stretch everything out. And by, in that, uh, by doing all these things, I can go out and play as good as I ever did. There's no problem. When I play, there's no pain. There's no numbing. There's no pins and needles. Um, every time I go to play, I'm virtually uh, carpal tunnel free. But I'm not actually free of it. I've come up with these methods to be able to manage it very, 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 very well. And ultimately, it saved my playing. I went and bought another vintage Fender rig. Uh, I like the Drip Edge Silver Face amps because they are black face circuitry. Um, but they're not as old, so theoretically, they don't have as many miles on them, so they could you know, maybe last longer. And I just love the tones. The tone of, well, I guess I love the tone of the black face amps. And you can also get it a lot cheaper in a silver face drip edge than you do in an actual black face form. So I got myself a nice uh, Fender drip edge uh, 68 or 69 Baseman amp with the original Fender vinyl cover. And I got a 1968 or 69 drip edge dual showman speaker cab because normally the Fender Baseman drip edge silver face 68 and 69 come, would be used with a drip edge 2x12. But I wanted to try a 2x15, and oh, I'm in love with the sound of my Strat through a Bassman Blackface Circuitry amp, and with the sound coming out of a 2x15 Fender Utah speaker cabinet. Awesome! Okay, folks, there you go. Uh, when, I was, when I first ran into this problem, I was searching the internet for things I could do on my own, other than going to, going to seek out surgery or, or, or whatever. 
and uh, I really couldn't find anything. If I had found the video that I just made, I'm not patting myself on the back in the least, I'm just sharing some information. But if I had found the same video that I just made with the information in it, it first of all, it would have immediately made me feel a lot less uh, scared, to be quite honest, about not being able to play anymore. And it would have given me a, a path to uh, being able to return fully to playing. So I hope this will help somebody. Thanks. Stratman Mark signing off. Keep on playing, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye now.